Shalom and welcome again to another episode of the epistle and we want to go to the word of God today in the second epistles to the church of Corinth or what is more commonly known as second Corinthians and if you have your Bible and I pray that you do would you turn with me to second Corinthians let's go to chapter 2 and from verse 14 onwards to verse 17 and let me read to you the word of God now thanks be to God who always lead us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing and to the one we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other the aroma of life leading to life and who is sufficient for these things for we are not as so many paddling the word of God but as of sincerity but as from Christ we speak in the sight of God in Christ hallelujah this is a profound statement written by Apostle Paul and let us dissect it and let us feast from it hallelujah so verse 14 again it says here thanks be to God or all glory to God or praises to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ now if you are using the new King James I would like you to underline the word always leads us in triumph because God always lead us in victory and here the word triumph in fact it speaks much more than just uh, victory triumph is total victory where you are able to overcome and subdue that which you battle hallelujah you have gained total complete victory over that which you battle and he says that he lead us always not just only a few times not just only once in a while when you behave yourself but always now the analogy that Paul uses here describe what is called a Roman parade where back in those days that the Roman soldiers they will have this triumphal procession okay and in their triumphal procession before the Emperor they would parade their strongest military and all the, the, the might of that military where it is like today you will see in, in um, Independence Day or certain National Day celebration of many nations that where the army would parade before the ruler of the nation and they would parade all those uh, uh, whatever missiles that they have all the ammunitions of the military to, to show off how strong they are or how much weaponry they have and that's the analogy that's being used here that Christ parade us to the world and to our enemies to the, to the demonic influences that we are his strength that we are the cream of the crop so to say that we are the elite he shows off his military strength in the church that's why he lead us in that triumphal procession hallelujah and then in that we 
while marching in that victory with Christ, we diffuse a fragrance. Hallelujah. Now, to diffuse something means that you must first be infused by something. Now, let me put it in perspective here. You cannot release something unless you have first received something, right? And we are being infused by Christ, by His glory in us, by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And through that, we are able to diffuse or to express the knowledge of Christ and the glory of Christ within us so that others would smell the fragrance. Now again, if you look at the analogy of fragrance, fragrance is diffused when something is infused or something is burning within. What releases the fragrance is that there is something burning and the fire of God which burns inside of us, which burns out with our zeal, our passion, our love for God, it always diffuses a fragrance of that sweet-smelling aroma. Our life of prayer, our worship life, our faith life will always release something where people can see, and people can, in this case, smell the fragrance of Christ in us. And we diffuse the fragrance of His knowledge where? In every place, not only inside the church, but most especially so outside the church, in the workplace in the marketplace, in the mall, wherever we go, we are called to diffuse the fragrance of Christ. And verse 15 says, we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Hallelujah. The fragrance of Christ simply means we are the essence of Christ. We are the expression of Christ. Hallelujah. And it says, we uh, the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved it speaks about those who are Christians and among those who are perishing those who are non-believers why? well to the Christian in verse 16 to the one we are the aroma Sorry, first of all, he mentioned to the perishing, we are the aroma of death. Meaning that we witness, hear this, we witness the salvation of Christ for all mankind and we witness to those who are perishing. Listen to this. We witness to them that there is only one way to be safe and to receive salvation. And that's through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. For there's no other name that man can be saved except the name of Jesus. And there's no other way that man can come to God except through Jesus. He is the way. So we become that tangible, walking, living witness. And because we are the witness of the cross, those who refuse us, those who refuse the, the, the grace of God pour out at the cross through Jesus Christ would receive condemnation upon themselves because they have refused the only way for salvation and that's through Jesus. That's why to them we are the aroma of death that will lead to spiritual death and eternal death for those who reject Jesus. Are you hearing this? Because we are the signpost, we are the lampstands of God, we are the signboard and the signpost of God on earth that leads people to Jesus. And if they refuse it to them, we are a signboard or we are a fragrance that will point them, I will use the word point them to the truth and the truth is they will receive 
eternal death, and spiritual death, because they refuse to accept Jesus. But then in verse 16, it says, But to those who are being saved, to those who are the children of God, we are the aroma of life, leading to life. So it means that to those who are being saved, our testimonies of Christ, our testimony of the indwelling Holy Spirit, our testimony of our faith with the Lord releases a fragrance of life that will lead to greater experiences of life to those who have accepted life and eternal life through Christ Jesus. So now you understand what these words mean. And it concludes with this word will say, and who is sufficient for these things? Well, in the very beginning, we are never sufficient for anything, but it is Christ who makes us sufficient for all things. Hallelujah. Because in Him, we have all sufficiency for all things, and we can do all things through Him. Hallelujah. So, if I would summarize that, Paul is saying that as a Christian, we are a witness, we, re we diffuse the fragrance, we release the knowledge of God. And to those who are saved, who are being saved, who are Christians, we become an edification to them. We edify them. We empower their faith. We encourage their faith. But to those who refuse Christ, to those who have rejected the work of grace, then we are a witness on earth that there is damnation for those. There is con there's eternal condemnation for those who refuse Christ. So you see the two sides of that. And verse 17. For we are not as so many paddling the word of God but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Now, what is Paul saying here? Back in his days, in the first, in the first century, there were many heretic teachers and preachers who manipulated the scriptures for their own gain and they used the scriptures to deceive many and to manipulate many for even monetary gain for financial blessings and for favor and and so on and so they are paddling the word and they will speak such words as grace 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 all is well and god wants you to enjoy prosperity and happiness and pleasure and all kinds of sensual enjoyment and so they will in a way deceive many into believing that once you believe that Jesus is the Son of God then all will be well well we often know that that is true but sometimes there are also a lot of challenges especially when we start to believe and walk with the Lord in a, an adverse generation who is hostile to the gospel, we will face all kinds of resistance and opposition, right? So that's why Paul used this word here, that we are not like those who peddle the word of God for any or trade the word of God or commercialize the word of God for any other kind of selfish gain. But we speak the word of God in truth, in sincerity. We speak the word of God because it is the word of God. And we do not compromise with that. Hallelujah. But the summary of today's epistle is we are the fragrance of Christ. And remember, a fragrance is diffused when there is something burning inside of us. And bear in mind, if there is garbage in us, okay, if there is junk, contamination, defilement and garbage 
inside of us. And that fire of God, when it touches us, hallelujah, then that garbage would release a stench, sometimes a horrible stench instead of a fragrance. Am I right? If you burn old mattress or old tires, you will get a horrible stench, right? Or garbage. So, what is inside of us will determine the fragrance that we release. I say it again. What abides in us, the substance that's inside of us, will determine the fragrance that we release. So, if you are the fragrance of Christ, it only means that Christ is in you. Hallelujah. And so may the Lord bless you with this epistle today. And remember, He always lead you in a triumphal proces procession in victory and triumph. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.